Hey guys, Rosie here. I just want to say I am so grateful that you're listening. We are just getting a massive amount of response on this podcast and I am so grateful that you're a part of this radically loved community, that you're enjoying the content and that you're enjoying all the guests and that you're still here and you're still working on yourself and your journey and your path. And I pray that you've received some tools listening to the guests or listening to any of my ideas or topics on meditation or yoga and how these tools can help you create a life of purpose to continue to help us give you the best content you can subscribe to this podcast and most of the time you can just do it from your phone from itunes click subscribe and write a review this really helps us continue this path and this journey and we love doing it so much and again i'm so grateful that you're here and if it doesn't resonate with you maybe you know a friend that might resonate with some of the information so Maybe share it with a friend if you're so inclined and let us know what you thought. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone. It's still the new year, and I'm really excited because uh, I'm always excited. <laughs> I wanted to share just a couple of things that really helped me at the beginning of the year. So I thought I would share the top five ways to start the year off right. And maybe there's some that you want to share with me. So please do so if uh, if I didn't mention something that you do that really helps you to stay motivated. So the first, first, first thing that I do every year is to do a yearly review. So take stock of where you've been and appreciate all the accomplishments that you've made in the last year. So uh, a, a typical thing that you could do is ask a couple of questions. So uh, like what went well for me last year? What accomplishments did I have? How did I improve my life? How did I improve my relationships? What did I remove from my life that is now making me happier? What do I wish I had taken more time for? So these are really great questions to be able to keep track of uh, your responses in a journal and you're able to refer back to them in the future and your answers over the year will be extremely enlightening. I've been doing this for the past almost 10 years and I'll tell you, some of the things that I've written have been pretty astounding. Some of the things that I've accomplished that once I accomplished them, I realized how much weight I had put into them. And then once I completed them, I was like, oh, really? So that was it. And some other things I still haven't accomplished yet. And it's nice to be able to have something to strive fo- forward or to strive toward something. Anyway, if you ask these types of questions um, in every area of your life, such as family, uh, relationships, uh, your financial house, your career, your home, etc., they'll they'll allow you to uh, appreciate what you've accomplished, right? So really the point is to make yourself feel good. Don't do this if it's something that you're going to beat yourself up over uh, not accomplishing something that you've set or something that's on your list every year. Because I'll tell you, there's probably three things on my list that I've had for about 11 years that I've still not accomplished. And that's okay. And I don't feel bad about it. It's just something that maybe takes time or it's just not been a priority. And I mean, let's be real. If you want to accomplish something, you really have to be able to change your perspective and to change your energetic field around it so that you can manifest it so that you can do it. You know, it's one of the things that I talk about a lot and I think about you really have to see where your priority is. You know, there's there's things in our lives that we do that take precedence over others. So you have to be able to weigh that out and you have to really be your best detective to see what those things are in your life. All right, I'll, I'll go on. Number two is finish what you started. Which projects, errands, and, and your general to-do list have you left over from the previous year that you can complete in two hours or less? So do them now and clear your mind from old items because I'll tell you these things weigh on you. There's a to-do folder that I have on my desktop that 
has been like just accumulated over the last two years that they're just things that I have to look up or things that I have to write or ideas that I may have that just sit in there. And one of my uh, coaches told me, if you, if you can complete it in two hours or less, just get them done, get them off of your desktop, get them out of your mind, and they'll make you feel so much better. And I took the last month to do that. And I'll tell you, I feel so much lighter. It's like doing a energetic spring cleaning for your insides. Keeping projects around um, don't do not do you any good. They just weigh on, on you. And we spend hours and hours thinking of them when it's something that can maybe just take you 10 minutes. I'll give you an example. There's uh, some paperwork that I had to fill out for uh, a class that I'm going to take uh, at, at um, my old college. And I just have to fill it out. It's just a form. It's a simple form for a class that I can take. And I've just been kind of lagging and not doing it. It's been weighing on my mind. And and I finally just sat down and I did it. And I'm like, oh, well, there's one less thing. And it frees up my mind to to obsess about something else I'm going to put on the back burner. Just kidding. Uh, Number three, let's be realistic. So dreaming is, is great. I, I love dreaming. I'm a big fan. But if you want to accomplish some improvements in your life, you need to be realistic. As much as you want something, it's very likely that you don't really believe you can have it. And this is a big problem when it comes to the realm of manifestation. So we have to turn a dream into something that we can picture accomplishing before it can become a reality. So it's not just something that you're you're so off the cuff dreaming about that you're not really able to do anything tangible uh, that you, that you can actually see, feel, or touch. So so it's just going to start again creating more of that undone pile. So take your dream and start breaking it down into milestones. If you want to work from home, what are the best steps you need to take? If you want to change your career. What are the next steps that you need to take? So break those down further so you can create a game plan and start working towards accomplishing that dream. And that that helps in so many ways. Not only does it inspire you and, and perhaps it might spark a type of creativity that might lead you down a path that you didn't even know was there. Number four, focus on what you really want. So speaking of dreaming, ask yourself what your dream looks like. What are you doing in the dream? How are you living? Who is in the dream with you? And what does a typical day entail? I work with a a lot of my clients to do these type of visualizations and these types of meditations where you really sit and you feel the dream happening in real time. What does it feel like in your body? Those questions will help you define the lifestyle that you really want and, and just give you ideas of how you can achieve that lifestyle. Uh, For example, if you see yourself relaxing by the fire with a good book and a cup of tea, ask yourself why you aren't spending more time that way now. What things are in your way and how can you rearrange your priorities in order to have the lifestyle that you want, right? So if you think that what you want is more money, keep digging at that response, right? So what do you what would you do if you had endless amounts of money? Would you travel? Would you volunteer or, or live simply and quietly away from, from all the chaos? We often think that money is the end goal when we really are just stuck in a rut. And we think that we can't do or have what we really want unless we have more money. So challenge that idea and dig to find those things that you really want and aim to pursue them and, and do it now. Now, now's the best time. Number five, put yourself at the top of the list. I say this all the time. I have to say it to myself more often than I'd like to admit. Using the information you gained by determining what you really want, put yourself at the top of the list this year. Why should 2018 be different? Why? Why do you want this year to be the year? Why, why do you want that? So, you know, the old adage is true. We really can't help others until we help ourselves. Taking care of yourself and striving to reach your own goals will make you better. It'll make you a better person. It'll make you a better lover. It'll make you a better friend, a better child, a better parent. Trust me, I've seen it been done. I've experienced it myself. It's just, it's so important for us to be able to take care of ourselves. Um, 
this is actually one of those those tasks that that I almost like to put at the forefront before I start to manifest any any other things of how to start a year. How am I taking care of myself? How am I taking care of my health? Join a challenge. Join a, a mastermind. Join a group. Uh, sign up for yoga classes. Sign up for meditation class. Sign up for something that's going to improve you at a deeper and maybe even more spiritual level. Be sure to make time for yourself each day to work toward your goals or to attain the lifestyle that you want. So how will you start the year off right? Make plans and send me your plans. Email me or direct message me on Instagram because you all know that I'm on there often. (laughs) I'd love to know what your plans are for this year and I'd love to know how I can assist you. That being said, have an amazing new year. I pray that this is your best year yet.